get up. Uh, just a few more minutes. Mm -mm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'll go downstairs and make coffee. You jump in the shower. Okay. What time is it? At 3.30. You've been Casey wherever you are. get up this hour. I'd get coffee at the hospital. Nothing out of a vending machine is good for you. I love doing it. Well, I love you doing it. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Mm. Besides, I had to get up early anyway to finish my designs for the drapery fabrics. They have to be in the mail this morning and I still have two left to do. You want to meet me for lunch? I have an idea I want to talk over with you. It's important. What? Later. You bring the sandwiches? Sure. Bean sprouts and avocado for me. I'll see you at the usual place. And uh, give little people my love when they wake up. What about eggs? Oh, I can't. I've got to pick up something in my apartment. Bye. Emergency. It's 24 hours on, 12 hours off. On call all the time for the next six weeks. Oh, I see. Ah, you know, it's what makes med school famous. Yeah. So I, uh, I won't have much time. But what time I have, I want to spend with you. Maybe I could uh, break a leg every now and then. Funny. Paul has been driving me crazy all morning. What do you want to talk to me about? I want you to live with me. You're not serious. I am serious. But, but you have a bachelor apartment, and I have two daughters, and a, and a house full of stuff. So we'll get a bigger apartment. Well, we'll get bunk beds. It's hammocks. I don't care. Oh, no, no, no. Don't give me that speech about growing up and becoming a doctor and moving back to California and setting up a rich practice in Beverly Hills and marrying a blonde debutante from USC. UCLA. UCLA. Look, when are you going to get it through your hard New England head that I love you? Well, I know you love me now, but it, I know it lasts forever. Why not? I want it to last forever, at least until I'm 90. Well, and I'm 94. How old do I have to get before you stop thinking of me as a younger man? Well, I think one of us ought to be realistic. Why? Why are you always so cautious? You're, you're waiting for fate to break us apart. Fate has nothing to do with it. You're the one who keeps getting in your own way. Do you want me or don't you? Of course I want you. Then take me, lady. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi. I was Indian Scouts. Okay. Mm. They taught them how to tell which side of the tree the moss grows on. That's great. Which side? The north side. Very good. Jay, thanks for picking him up. You're the perfect sister. Well, it's my pleasure. There's nobody I'd rather be with than these monsters. <laughs> Can I paint too, Mom? No, honey, right, right now I have to finish this for a deadline. I got a commission. Wonderful. Hmm. What's it going to be? Hopefully for uh, sheets and pillowcases. 
Is Paul coming over tonight? Uh, yeah, he should be here any time now. So why don't you two run upstairs and do your homework so you won't have to do it when he's here. Okay? All right. Too late. He's here. Okay. Hi, oh, Paul. Come here. great to come home from a hard day's work to be hugged and kissed by two beautiful women. And who wouldn't want to hug such a hmm. good-looking guy? Three. We gotta go. <laughs> Philip has one of those legal things. Just kidding. Goodbye. Bye, Jamie. Goodbye, Bye, baby. Jamie. Bye. Bye, Jamie. Did you bring it? What? You know. You mean this? Yeah, let me see it. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. This is a bedtime story only to be read at bedtime. Besides, you'd go on to the next chapter and that wouldn't be any fun. No, I won't. I'll only go as far as we went already. Promise? Cross my heart. Me too. All right. But if you even turn to page 21, I'll know. And that'll break the faith between us. I'll only go up to page 20. Right. You can trust us. You're right. They're going to love you living here. How's it going? Slow. I have to get all this in by Monday. Well, you got another job? Yeah. They love my stuff. Good. You keep working. I've got dinner already. Are you trying to make yourself indispensable? Yeah. How am I doing? Terrific. children stood round the hole in a ring, looking at the creature they had found. It was worth looking at. Its eyes were on long horns like snail's eyes, and it could move them in and out like telescopes. Is it alien? No, wait and see. You didn't see that movie, did you? Shh, Mom, the story. It had ears like a bat's ears, and its tubby body was shaped like a spider's and covered with thick, soft fur. Its legs and arms were furry, too, and it had hands and feet like a monkey. What on earth is it, Jane said? Shall we take it home? The thing turned its long eyes to look at her and said, Does she always talk nonsense, or is it only the rubbish on her head that makes her silly? <laughs> it looked scornfully at Jane's hat as it spoke. She doesn't mean to be silly, Anthea said gently. We none of us do, whatever you may think. Don't be frightened. We don't want to hurt you, you know. Hurt me, it said. Me, frightened. Upon my word, why you talk as if I were nobody in particular. Ah! Your feet are freezing. Well, that's why I'm so lucky to have you. You're a great foot warmer. Mm. Have you ever heard of socks? What's the fun in that? Paul. Oh. Let me tell me something. Yeah, what? How do they escape from the tower? Oh, <laughs> oh you don't. <laughs> no, you gotta wait till tomorrow night like everybody else. Oh, great. What's the point in being a grown-up person if you don't get special privileges? There isn't any point. I will tell you that it all works out in the end. Thanks. You're welcome. Paul. Mm. About our living together. You think your schedule's too crazy for us? <laughs> That is just the point. If I'm only going to get three hours of sleep tonight, I want it to be with you. Hmm. But living together is a commitment. I've never just lived with someone before. It's all new to me. Nice, but new. I want the girls to understand it. So do I. Good. You tell them. Now, wait a minute. Mindy, put milk on your cereal. Milk is yucky. I don't care. It's good for you. Will Paul be here at bedtime tonight? Yes. 
But he has a new schedule, and he may not be here at bedtime much anymore, but um, there may be a way that he can be here all the time when he's not at work. What? You both know how much Paul and I love each other. And the daddy and I have been divorced for uh, over two years. Will Paul be our new daddy? Would you like that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want you to get mixed up. We do have a real daddy, too. We won't get mixed up. Lots of kids have two daddies. Carrie has three. Well, we're not going to get married. I'm not real sure about that. But uh, he would be able to live with us. Would you like that? Oh, sure. Then we could have stories all the time. And we could have two daddies. <laughs> okay. Now you finish your cereal. I have work to do, and you're going to be late for school. Mindy, come on. Your daddy is on his way. You're going to be late. Hillary, I found your ribbon. Come on. I'll be there in a minute. Okay, come on, sweetheart. Hurry up. Watch your back. Oh, more books. Oh, you know how many years I've been in school? Let me tie your hair. I don't want to go to Dad's today. Honey, you always see your daddy on Sunday. That's the arrangement we made with the judge. I don't care. I want to help Paul move. You can help when you get back. What is this all the fun? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at yourself. One blue sock and one brown sock. Your daddy's on his way to hurry up and change your socks. He won't care. He won't even see him. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you care? No. Well, I care. Vote. March. Quick. must be Richard. I'm Paul Adams. How do you do? Well, the girls will be out in a minute. Got a couple of terrific kids there. Thank you. I think so myself. Well. Bye, Hindi. Bye, Millery. That's not right. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hillary, what is Paul doing? He's moving in with us. He's going to live here. He's going to be our new daddy. Did not Jesus promise that he would come again and lead us home? He said, Yea, so I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That is his promise to us. When the time comes for each of us to leave our earthly houses, we have the Lord's promise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again. You too. That was a good sermon, Dad. Thank you, son. I like the part about the sheep. You did? Does that mean that you are coming back next Sunday? <laughs> sure it does. Hi, Grandpa. Ah. I'll see you at home, dear. All right, Mom. Thank you. Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah. Dad, should we have the girls say grace? Less is food to our use and us to our service. Amen. 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 Amen.
Very good. Mother has outdone herself again. Uh, now, John, it's nothing out of the ordinary. I look forward to these special times when the girls and Richard are with us. I miss them so. The rolls. Maybe you're going to have lots of roast beef. I don't want any roast. Well, you've got to eat, honey. I'll just have mashed potatoes and peas. Well, what are you talking about? You love roast beef. I don't want any meat either. Now, here we are. Now, what have we here? Have I ever done the roast beef? No, 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 Mother. Everything is just fine. What's gotten into you two? I'm going to be a vegetablearian like Paul. Who's Paul? He's living with us. He's going to be a doctor. Now we have two daddies. You what? He's not our real daddy. Well, what is that supposed to mean? He's mommy's boyfriend and he's going to live with us in everything. And everything indeed. Uh, Richard, you know about this? Not until today. John. Did you talk to Nancy about that? No. How come it's such a big deal? People live with each other all the time on TV. It doesn't matter how many people do something. A sin is a sin. Now, John, we, we do not punish children for the sins of the father, or mother, as the case may be. Is Mommy going to hell? Oh, no. No, dear. Your grandfather sometimes forgets that the dinner table isn't the pulpit. John, let's not talk about this in front of the children. Well, it certainly doesn't seem as a surprise to them. Look, let's talk about it later. Can we please? It's Nancy's life. She's the one making all the decisions. Those precious girls are your daughters. Our children and how we raise them make up a very important part of our lives. So don't be so cavalier about your responsibility as a father. You think you and your sister would have turned out as well as you have if we took a hands-off approach to your upbringing? I'm proud of you. You're a fine man. You have no reason to be proud of me, Dad. I failed as a husband, as a father. I lost my children. They had your flesh and blood. Whether you're with them or not, they're your responsibility for life. But what do I do, Dad? What am I supposed to do? Sometimes I wish the whole thing would just go away. I'm so tired of it all. God is on your side. Pray for that guidance. You'll find an answer. Might very well be the most important thing you ever do for your children. You must talk to Nancy. Hey, we're back! Hi, Mom! Hi! How was your visit? Fine. Good. Mm. Where's Paul? He's at the hospital. Come on, go upstairs, take off your coats. That's too early! Uh, upstairs, into your no, jammies. Goodbye. Too early. Uh, out. Be right up. Brush your teeth and don't forget to close the door. to talk to you is uh is he here no what is it why didn't you let me know you were planning to have a man move in here because i didn't think it was any of your business <laughs> you didn't think it was my business if my daughters are living in an atmosphere of promiscuity but living with one man doesn't constitute promiscuity and besides, they are our daughters. Nancy, you are the person they respect most in the whole world. And you're teaching them that intimacy outside of marriage is not a sin. Well, I don't think it is. Listen, one of the terms of our divorce is that they can go to church with you on Sunday. They have the opportunity to learn your beliefs. But all the sermons in the world can't compete against what you're teaching them right here at home. I am being honest with them. I am doing what's right for me, and later on they can do exactly what's right for them. 
Look, if you deliberately choose to have relations with some man, that's your right and your choice, even if I don't approve. But what about their rights? They didn't choose to live with this man. I asked them. They wanted Paul to move in with them. But they're babies. They don't know what it means. I forbid you to flaunt this relationship in front of my children. You have no right to forbid me to do anything but your... Maybe not. But I do have some say over how my children are going to be raised. And I'm not going to give up that right. So you just consider what I've said. Go to hell. No, sweetheart, I'm not. Grandpa said it was a sin for Pa to live here. Is that true, Mom? Why did Daddy yell at you? Come here, Minnie. This is kind of hard to explain. Everyone has their own beliefs. And your daddy thinks that the way we're living together is wrong. And he has a right to think that. But I don't. I believe that God is love. And that what we have together, Paul and I, and you two girls, that's love. And I think God understands that. That's what I believe. Now, when you two girls are all grown up, then you have a right to decide what's right for you. Okay. I you God up and send you to hell. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. It's time for you to go to bed. doing here? Well, the girls invited me. The girls might not know any better, but you certainly should have. Come on, Daddy. Let's go see my picture. Okay, honey. Just a moment. You know, I just don't understand you people. You not only live like this, but you insist on publicizing it. Look, you're not their father. You're not even their stepfather. You shouldn't be here. Uh... Thanks for the tour, girls. I've got to go to work anyway. You uh, show your dad all the great stuff you showed me, and I'll see you at home. You don't have to go. Oh, yes, I do. I'll see you later. Wonderful. I've got to take off. I'll, I'll see you later. How are you? Fine. Fine. How long has it been? Oh, it's been about two years. 
Well, what can I do for you this time? I, uh... I want to sue Nancy for custody of my children. You have two daughters, right? How old are they now? Eight and ten. And what are the grounds? Moral. You contend that your ex-wife is an unfit mother? No. Nancy's not a bad mother. Not in most things. It's just in this one area. And, and that is? She's living with a man. I see. Can we prove harm to the girls? Well, moral harm, certainly. Well, suppose we do get halfway into this thing and she decides to marry the man or he moves out. And you're ten or twelve thousand dollars into litigation. What would you do? Drop it. So basically, it's not a question of whether or not the girls come to live with you. No. You see, I, I'm just concerned that they're brought up with at least some decent moral standards. I have to tell you, it's a long shot. The odds are overwhelmingly against it. You sure you wouldn't like to think it over? No, I'm sure. You just tell me what I need to do. Ma, help me with this. I can't do it. Hey, that's great. Where'd you get that sock? It's Paul's. Well, does he know that you're cutting up his socks to make doll sweaters? He won't care. I'm sure you left him the other one, right? <laughs> yes? Hi, are you uh, Nancy Carruthers? Yes. Whereas you are hereby summoned and required to serve upon the plaintiff's attorney a copy of your answer to the complaint for custody of the children, which is herewith served upon you. Whereas the said attorney is reported to this court that an action in what? on what grounds? It's there someplace. I think the phrase is an atmosphere of immorality which is unhealthy to the children. An immoral atmosphere which is unhealthy for the children? You can't possibly believe anyone will buy that. Oh, he's jealous. He just wants to harass you. But she doesn't operate like that. Paul, can he do it? Can he take the girls away from me? I don't know. It sure looks like he's going to try. I'm a lawyer, but I think you're going to have to go to court. I don't want to go to court. Well, maybe if you talk to him, you can work it out without a hassle. If he was willing to talk, then he wouldn't have done this. For me, I'd sure try and talk before I fought. But it's not you. It's me. I know Richard, and I have to fight. I can't let him march in and take the girls or force me to change the way I live. I don't understand why you married him. I was young. He was older. And he was steady. He also was the only man I knew who wasn't a Beatles fan. Great reason for marrying I thought that made him an individualist. Also, he was, he was very idealistic. He always was saying that he wanted to make the world a better place to live. And back then, someone with a sense of value was uh, very attractive. Couldn't you see what you were getting into? No. 
Don't have me so fast. We got married. We dropped out of architectural school. And then the problems began. He didn't say anything. He never complained. It was just sort of a silent martyrdom from then on. And then one day, I woke up and I realized that as far as he was concerned, I was there to uh, cook dinner, dress the girls, go to church, and make love once a week. And it just wasn't enough. That was the end of that story. Good morning. Hi. Sorry to barge in on Sunday. Oh, that's all right. Remember that? Mom called this morning. She said you didn't call on her birthday. Oh, no. I forgot. Well. Wow. so much on my mind. Sure. Well, she was worried. I said you were fine. Okay. You didn't tell her about the custody suit. No. No. Thanks. You feel like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Hi. Hi. Oh, I hate to interrupt. That's okay, they'll keep. It's the whole point of collecting those things anyway. Did you bring my summons? Yes. Right. Well, Richard certainly means business, that's for sure. Well, well what's going to happen? I mean, what do I do now? Well, if you go to court and win. Nothing changes. You retain custody of the children. But if you lose, Richard is awarded custody and the girls have to go live with him. Do you think I'm going to lose? No, I think you'll probably win. I can't believe that a court in this day and age would declare you unfit simply because you're living with the guy. But, uh, well, I have lost cases that I ought to have won and I've won cases that I ought to have lost. I mean, you can't really tell What's really going to happen until it's all over? Well, that's terrific. It really says a great deal for our legal system, doesn't it? But in the meantime, what does Nancy do? Well, she has several options. I mean, she could try to work this out with Richard. Or she could get a lawyer and fight it out in court. She could ask uh, Paul to move out, or, or she could even marry Paul. What right does he have to tell me how to live my life? Because he's the father of your children. Are you on my side or, or what? I don't think that it's a question of size. I think he's simply trying to show you the alternatives. Well, I'm not ready to marry Paul right now. But I do love him. So I'm certainly not going to ask him to move out. Well, then the only option you've got left is to get a lawyer and fight it out in court. <coughs> Will you represent her? No. Why not? Because being a member of the family, there might be some conflict of interest. But you handled my divorce. That's right, but uh, that was pretty straightforward. It was uncontested. Uh, this could turn out to be pretty messy. And it wouldn't be good for your career. No, it's not that. Matter of fact, it might be great for my career. Then what is the real reason? I don't approve of what you're doing, Nancy. It's as simple as that. You think it's wrong that I'm living with Paul? No, I think it's wrong for you to risk losing your children so that you can live with them. I don't think it's responsible of you to gamble with their future. Well, you said I'd win. I said probably. It's still a gamble. I mean, given our system, there's no guarantee that you're not going to get a moralistic conservative judge. I think I already have. I'm not judging you. The hell you're not! 
Come on, you guys. That's enough. Now, stop it. Look, I'm not saying that the system is right, but it is still the system. And if you don't wake up to that, you're going to end up with a terrific case and no kids. Look, why don't you call Richard? He could use a lawyer just like you. Nancy, please, try to understand. I understand he's already tried and convicted me. Now, wait a minute, please. You know how much we wanted children. Well, he happens to think the children are the most important thing. So do I. I care about my children. And I have no intention of letting them go. But there's another issue at stake right now. I believe that a person has a right to live the way he or she chooses, just so it doesn't hurt anybody. And no judge or anybody else is going to tell me that I can't live with somebody that I love. That's what I believe in. And I firmly believe it's worth fighting for. Ms. Patterson, this is Ms. Carruthers. Would you like a cup of coffee? And, no, thank you. Sit down. Thank you. I'm glad you could see me so quickly. A telephone call intrigued me. Tell me about it. Well, I really don't know where to start. Why don't you show me your documents? <laughs> of course. Atmosphere of immorality. Hmm. Strange that someone would sue on this basis alone in this day and age. Are you sure there's nothing else? No. Do you drink? No. Do you do any drugs? No. Are you sleeping with anyone other than the man you live with? No. Kathy, can I have some more coffee, please? Do you hit your kids? No. Have you ever had a homosexual relationship? No, and I don't know what all this has to do with anything. I'm sorry, I just don't want any surprises in court. Would you say that your uh, ex-husband is motivated by jealousy or sincere moral outrage? Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's mostly a moral thing. Okay, let's do it. I think this is going to have some interesting implications for women's rights. Now, just a minute. I just want to know one thing. Could I lose my girls because of this? Well, there are no guarantees, but I think the odds are tremendously in your favor. And I think the press will be on our side. The press? This is going to be a very controversial cause. I don't think there's anything controversial about a mother who wants to keep her children. That's what I want. No publicity, no causes. Just my children. So let's just concentrate on that, please. Absolutely. Mm. Hi. How'd it go? Did you like the lady lawyer? Uh, she seems, seems fine. She's a fisherman, Frank, and she said the worst thing that could happen was that we got married. Well, that's why you look like it's the end of the world. Or that you moved out. I vote for the former. Want some coffee? We're not voting on either one. Just trying to make my position clear. Don't worry, your position is very clear. Hey, don't let him get you down. This is Paul, remember? I'm on your side. I, I know, but you don't have as much at stake as I do. They're not your kids. For the record, I know this is hard to believe, but I love your kids almost as much as I love you. They're magical little people, and, and I would do anything to keep them from growing up to be repressed, guilt-ridden adults like their father. I will, I will marry you, or I will move out, I will buy a suit. You name it. But you're not alone here. I'm in this thing all the way. Okay? Okay. We should find some way of explaining all this legal business to the kids without getting too technical. 
Have they been asking you that? Yeah, well, Hillary had a confidential talk with me. She said you were acting strange. Wanted to know if you were pregnant. Oh, no. That's all I need. I don't know. Might be kind of fun. I could get my obstetrics rotation in about nine months. It's not even funny. I have a better idea. Why don't we just run away to the South Pacific and never come back? Now you're talking like an adult. But your head was a close call, but there's no problem. You're going to be just fine. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's play ball. All right. Wait, well, wait. I know. You want your mother to go to court tomorrow all bruised and battered? Are you going to have to go to jail? No, sweetheart. I'm going to stay right here with both of you. What is Daddy going to do? Well, uh, Daddy's going to ask the court if uh, the two of you can go live with him. I don't want to. Me either. That's why Mommy's going to court tomorrow. To ask the judge if the four of us can continue living the way we are. Paul, too? Right. Paul, too. Look, I know that it's wrong for them to live like that. I just don't think a trial is going to solve anything. My lawyer says that our case is slim at best, and besides, even if it goes our way, all that man has to do is marry Nancy or move out, and I lose. I lose the case and a great deal of money, too. But you can't put a price on something like this, son, so don't let it eat away at you. There's just no turning back. But there might be some better way to handle it. Some way that would spare the children the embarrassment of this kind of trial. I wish there was another way, too. But there simply is not. If another road existed, believe you me, the Lord would have pointed you in that direction. Just realize there's probably many children in the same situation as yours. Look how much good you'd be doing by pursuing this. But not if I lose, Dad. And I'm so tired of losing. You will not lose. You will not. There you are. Where's Paul? He's at work, but he'll be here later. Okay, you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Mm -hmm.
see you. Oh, thank you for being here. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Thanks. I would have wished us better luck in drawing a judge. Why? I don't think he likes women much. All please rise. The probate and family court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, County of Suffolk, is now in session. The Honorable Preston Winters Judge presiding. Be seated and come to order. Well, the court has before it this morning the case of Carruthers versus Carruthers. Both parties ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Counsel for the plaintiff, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to begin by saying that it is not without just cause that we seek a change in custody. When impressionable children are threatened with moral confusion and corruption at a tender age, a loving father is moved to seek direct action. Your Honor, we intend to demonstrate that the cohabitation of Mrs. Carruthers with a student by the name of Paul Adams creates an atmosphere of immorality which is unhealthy for the children. There is a precedent for change of custody under such circumstances, and that case is still good law in this commonwealth. We therefore request that the custody of the two minor children be removed from the mother and awarded to the father, Richard Carruthers. Mr. Patterson? Thank you, Your Honor. I'm aware of the precedent, but I contend that it is not applicable for reasons that will become apparent later. In this country today, it is no longer shocking for an unmarried couple to live together. In some states, they even have laws to protect cohabitants' rights. It's incredulous to think a court would deny a mother custody on that basis alone. May I remind the court that the burden of proof rests with the plaintiff to prove indisputably that my client is providing a, an immoral atmosphere that is unhealthy for her children. Unfortunately, our society puts a great deal of pressure on women to marry, or remarry in this case. A woman is not free to work at her job, raise her children, and live with the man she loves without being prosecuted. Ms. Patterson. The point. Counsel, Yes, Your Honor. We intend to show that not only is the home situation wholesome and decent as it now stands, but that since Mr. Adams moved in, the children are happy, well-adjusted, and their schoolwork has improved. A change of custody would not be in their best interest. Mr. Crenshaw, your first witness. They've been very restless in church. I, I don't think they even listen to the sermons anymore. Are your daughters in the habit of going to church with you regularly? Every Sunday. Now, would you please tell the court about the conversation that occurred between you and the girls on the afternoon that Paul Adams moved into their home? Yes. We were having dinner, and one of them mentioned that a man was moving into the house with them. There was a bit of confusion about whether or not he would become their daddy since he was not married to their mother. Now, did you sense that there may have been a deeper confusion going on? Yes, I did. I was afraid that their mother's behavior might undermine their whole framework of right and wrong. It seems to me that a mother's example in the home can outweigh a whole lot of good sermons. Thank you. No more questions. Your witness, Ms. Patterson. Mr. Carruthers, uh, how did you uh, learn that Mr. Adams was moving into your house? Oh, I saw him moving in. Had you ever seen him before that day? No. Did you see any kind of interaction between Mr. Adams and your daughters? Interaction? Did they say anything to one another? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, they said goodbye to each other, I think. Did they seem to be on friendly or even affectionate terms with each other? 
Objection. Your Honor, I'm attempting to demonstrate that the plaintiff has brought suit based on jealousy, bitterness, possibly even vengeance, not with the children's best interests in the forefront of his mind. Overruled. I'll repeat the question, Mr. Carruthers. Were your daughters on affectionate terms with Paul Adams? I, uh... Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Well, in your opinion, did they, did they like Paul Adams? Did, uh, did they appear to be afraid of him? Were they cold to him? No, I, I suppose... I, uh, I guess... They... Liked him, but I don't think Thank that has... Thank you. You've answered my question. Mr. Carruthers, who filed for divorce when you and your wife were separated? She did. Is it true that you didn't want the divorce? Yes. Do you pay both child support and alimony? I pay child support, not alimony. Good. Now, let me just go back to the day Paul Adams moves in. Just to see if I have the situation clear. That Sunday morning, you arrived and uh, to pick up your daughters, and you discovered a young man whom you've never seen before moving into your house. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the house where you formerly lived with your ex-wife when the family was together. Now, this stranger is moving into the house to take the place your wife has asked you to leave. This stranger, whom you assume to be sleeping with your ex-wife in your old bed. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Now, this stranger is not only, by your own observation, on uh, affectionate terms with your little girls, but um, they are already referring to him as a new daddy. Did that make you angry, Mr. Carruthers? Yes. I ask you, Mr. Carruthers, if you can honestly tell this court that that anger was not motivated by hurt and jealousy. No. At that moment, if you'd found out that Paul Adams was married to your ex-wife, would you have been any less furious? I don't know. I put it to you that you were filled with anger and jealousy, and that you made the decision to fight for custody based more on your own emotional response than on any question of morality. Is that true? No. Thank you. No further questions. Are you sure you're not antagonizing the judge? That old goat. Just loves to throw his weight around. Don't worry about it. He may be crusty, but he generally hands down um, middle-of-the-road decisions, which in this case is in our favor. Oh, well, because in this kind of case, if you will win, no one will ever know, probably. But if you lose, you'll be all over the front pages of the tabloids. Oh, yeah, lady loses um, children over live-in lover. <laughs> you'll be booked solid in all the daytime talk shows. Great. Please don't worry about it. My point is that Judge Winters hates the heat, doesn't like the press. So his uh, decisions are generally, don't rock the boat. I hope you're right. Personally, wouldn't mind a little coverage. We'll play it safe. Low profile. Here they come. Oh, no. Is it true that you're willing to lose your children for the sake of the Your children understand what's happening in this case. You think that this is a new story? You think that this is a new story? Your children really have this story. I'll be ordering you for a young man. What about your love? What do you think that this is a new story? I said no, The way that you were living now, you said the law was...
What are they doing here? I don't know. Somebody's been doing their homework. What hurt us? I don't know. In my extensive studies in children's therapy, it's been demonstrated clearly that a major change in a child's basic system of values that occurs during the impressionable years of 7 through 11 can cause extensive stress, insecurity, and result in more serious psychological crises when the child reaches puberty. And what might some of these long-range effects be, in your opinion? Um, delinquency, drug usage, suicide. It's difficult to say. Well, thank you, Dr. Holmes. Your witness. Dr. Holmes, have you ever met Melinda or Hillary Carruthers? No. No more questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Dr. Holmes. Do you have any further witnesses, Mr. Crenshaw? No, Your Honor. Not at this time. Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Patterson. Your Honor. The defense plans to call the two minor children of the party as witnesses. Objection! Since it is the welfare of these two children that is at stake, we would like your honor to consider when we could arrange to put them on the stand. I'm well aware of what is at stake, Mr. Patterson. But before the children can testify, I will have to determine their competency because of their age. And that will be dealt with after you've introduced the other testimony you have to offer. It's now four o'clock. Court will recess until 9 o'clock Monday morning, at which time the defense may proceed to present its case. You'll be put on the stand on Monday. Can you arrange to be here on time? I'll work it out. Good. Get some rest, too, both of you. I'll call you. Sheila, how do you think we're doing? I never raise my bets at halftime. But okay, I think. What do you think? I think you got a hell of a lawyer. And if we don't win, there's no justice in the world. Is that an unbiased opinion? Nancy? Uh, can I speak to you for a minute? It's important. It's important. Maybe you should talk to her lawyer. Excuse me, this is between me and my wife. She's not your wife. She's not yours either. Please, stop it. Uh, I'll see you at home. It won't take long. Everybody's tired. Let's make it as short as possible. Okay. What is it? I'd like to find some way to settle this thing out of court. Well, it was your idea, Richard. I just don't want the children dragged into it. I don't want to see them go through the same kind of thing on the stand that I went through today. Well, neither do I, but I think it's important that you hear their side. I just thought maybe we could find some way, the two of us, to, to just work it out, put aside all our personal feelings and do what's best for them. So what do you think is best for them? Well, I'm not blind or self-centered enough to think that they'd be happier living with me. Sunday nights, they can't wait to get home. But don't you see, Nancy, I just can't let them live in immoral circumstances. Why can't you just marry Paul? Just marry him, quickly. A legal ceremony if you don't believe in God. I've never stopped believing in or, God. Or why can't you at least have him move out of the house? You, you can keep on seeing him if you must, but not in front of the children. So that's the way you see it. I think it's fair. Well, I don't. Richard, this is my life now. And I'm going to live it the way I see fit. And if I ever decide to get married again, it will be because I choose to, not because I've been pressured into it. And as far as running around and sneaking in front of the girls, well, I wouldn't even consider it. Want those girls to learn anything except how to be honest and open. All right. That's your choice. 
I made the offer. The girls are asleep. You missed the last chapter, but I promised them I'd read it to you before you dozed off. Good. Reynolds Textile Mills wants me to do my leaf designs in uh, sheets and pillowcases nationally, and dust ruffles and comforters to match. You did it. That's wonderful. <laughs> Paul, I have worked toward this for uh, over a year and a half, and uh, nothing seems to be very important. I was just thinking that uh, if I were to lose the girls or you, nothing else matters. Nancy, you're not going to lose us. I can't be sure of that. There are no guarantees that you don't lose the people you love. Well, there's one guarantee. We can get married. Oh, come on, let's do it. Let's just blow old Richard out of the water. All right, cancel that. Let's, let's do it for us. Paul, it's, it's just not the right time. It's not the right reason. It's not the not, right man. No. No, you are absolutely the right man. Why all the hesitation? What's, what's so risky about marrying me? I mean, you have something very rare here, a, a genuine, faithful, one-woman man. I mean, if, if I were you, I'd grab me and never let me go. Paul, it's not you. You're the most wonderful thing that's happened to me outside of the girls. It's me! I just want to prove that I can make my own decisions. That I can make it! God, it sounds so cliché, but that's how I feel. I know that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a new kind of man. I mean, they write about me and Cosmo. You can marry me and still have all that. Sure. Sounds terrific now. But we'll get married in a year from now. I'll be a housewife yelling at the kids. And you'll be a successful doctor, barely having time for us. And we'll be arguing about credit cards and where to go on vacation. Well, I don't want that scared to death that it's going to go sour. I'm just afraid that I don't believe in getting married and living happily ever after anymore. I do. Yeah, you're young, and you've never been married. It's not my fault the woman I love won't marry me. Paul, please! John. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you. We have absolutely nothing to talk about. I have a meeting in ten minutes. But it won't take long. You seem to be forgetting that this custody business is between you and my son. It does not involve me. Yes, it does. Richard would never have taken it this far if you hadn't pressured him into it. My son was moved by his conscience. His love of God, his children. You say God is love, but there is nothing loving in what you're doing. It's just bringing out unhappiness and guilt in it. I am not interested in your kind of love. What kind of love do you believe in that? The kind that makes a little girl think that her mommy's going to go to hell? The love of God, a belief in family, and I might have known that's something that you, you would not understand. Please don't try to intimidate me. I'm not eight years old, and I am not your son. Richard's going to lose even if he wins. He doesn't want custody of the girls. And they don't want to move in with him. He's afraid they're going to hate him if he makes them move away from their home and their mother, and yes, even Paul. You're lying. You're lying. No, I am not lying. Richard wants to settle out of court. He said he would drop this case in a second, but the poor man's afraid he's going to go to hell. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't you see it would be so much better just if you would leave Richard alone? What gives you the right to come in here and tell me how to act? 
I have to speak to my son. Now you get out of here. Get out of here. Huh? Huh? What happened? I went to see him at the office and, and we argued. I... Are you Mr. Brothers? Yes. Oh, would you come inside, please? Matt? Hello, Wilson. How is he? What happened? Mother? commit his soul to you, Lord, for safekeeping. May he rest in peace. Amen. Go on now, girls. We have to say goodbye to Grandpa. I don't want to see Grandpa. He's dead. He looks like a ghost. It's all right, girls. Just pretend Grandpa's asleep. Come on. Daddy. Hillary, you mind. Mindy, you too. Come on. Necessary, Nancy. It's part of the service. No, Richard, it is not necessary. He was their grandfather. We're going home. I don't understand you. Why are you doing this? You've taken my marriage, my home, my children, and now my father. You've taken everything. And I just sat back and let you do it. But not anymore. I'm going to fight you, Nancy. And I'm going to win.
We're all going to die someday. I hope it isn't for a long, long time. Not until you and I are little old ladies with false teeth. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stay with you always. Till I have false teeth. But I won't ever, ever go away. No. You won't ever, ever go away from me. Trash like this in the middle of a trial. I do not give interviews. Oh, when a man's wife throws him out, should he stand idly by while a young stranger moves into the house he paid for? Should he stand by while this freeloader makes it with his wife when his young daughters are in the next room? How much is a man supposed to take? Ask the defendant's lawyer, Mr. Leland Crenshaw. I was misquoted, obviously. Oh. The judge recessed this case because of Reverend Carruthers' death. Not for you to spend time making a big hit in the papers. Oh, come off it. You're just angry because my version hit the stands first. I bet you can't wait to get your feminist propaganda on the 6 o'clock oh. news. At least I'm using the press for my client's benefit. And not for some personal political gain that might lose my client as children. I'll see you in court, Ms. Patterson. What do you do, Miss Brent? I teach Hillary's class at school. Have you noticed any change in uh, Hillary's attitude in the last few months? Yes, I have. Uh, there's been a marked improvement in her verbal skills. Three months ago, she was slightly below the class average reading level. Now she's almost half a grade ahead. What well, might account for that kind of acceleration? Evidently, someone's been working with her. Do you have any idea who that might be? Yes, from what Hillary's told me, she's been doing a lot of extra reading with Paul Adams. Do you think that Hillary is a well-adjusted child? Yes, I think she's very well-adjusted. She gets along with her peers, and she seems to be very happy at home, especially in the last few weeks. In your opinion, uh, has Hillary's improved attitude roughly coincided with Paul Adams moving into the home? Yes, it has. Thank you, Miss Brent. In your opinion, are you a good mother? Yes, I am. On what do you base that opinion? Well, I, I love my children, and I let them know. When something's bothering them, they feel free to ask me about it. They come first in my life. And if they're sick or, or they need me, I rearrange my schedule. I am a parent, but but I'm also their buddy, and, and that means a lot. What about religious training? They go to church every Sunday with their father. And how is discipline handled? Uh, there are rules. They have chores, and if they break a rule, 
then their privileges are taken away. But on the whole, they're, they're very well-behaved girls. How would you describe their relationship with Paul Adams? Terrific. They love him. He loves them. He has a tremendous amount of patience in and he takes time to explain everything so that they understand. What do they do together? I think the greatest gift that he's given them is, is a love for books and reading. They used to be uh, TV junkies and, and Paul has gotten them all excited about books and, and they hardly ever turn on television anymore. Thank you. Oh. One more question. If you had to leave town for a week, would you have any qualms about leaving the children entirely in Paul Adams' care? None whatsoever. Thank you. Your witness. Uh, do, do you go to church, Mrs. Crothers? No, I don't. But you were a regular church goer at one time, isn't that correct? Yes. Um, when Richard and I were married, we went to a church regularly, yes. And then you had a falling out with the church? Uh, I, I suppose you could call it that. Well, what would you call it? A lapse of faith? I just stopped going to church services. They no longer serve my needs. Now, when you are children, come home from church and they talk about what they've learned, do you reinforce it or contradict it? I stay out of it completely. So you don't uh, talk to them about anything in the areas of uh, religion or morality or right and wrong? These are areas are not discussed, is that right? No. We definitely talk about what's right and wrong, only not in religious terms. Now, you've told the court that you love your children and that you would do anything. Is that right? Yes. And yet, you risk losing them in order to sustain a relationship with your boyfriend. Isn't that right? I, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. And I don't think that, that I have to lose anyone. Just answer the question, Mrs. Krebs. The real question that I think you're asking is if I love my children, and the answer is yes. I do love my children. You're not responding to the question, Mrs. Crothers. When Mindy was born, she weighed three and a half pounds and she almost died. I would have given up my life to save her and at this very moment I would give up my life to save either one of those girls. Mrs. Crothers, you've been divorced for two years now? Is that right? Yes. And in the last two years, between your marriage and your... Uh, current roommate. Have you had any other sexual relationships? Objection! Your Honor, that question is irrelevant and immaterial to the issue before the court. Overruled. I'll repeat the question, Mrs. Crothers. Uh, did you sleep with anyone uh, during the two years between your marriage and your current roommate? answer the question, Mrs. Crothers. A simple yes or no will do. In those two years, did you go to bed with anybody else? Yes. Thank you. No more questions. I have another question, Your Honor. Proceed. Mrs. Carruthers, how many times in that two-year period did you go to bed with someone? Only once. Thank you. No further questions. Would you say you were good with children, Mr. Adams? I guess so. I think I'm good with Hillary and Mindy. To what do you attribute that? love them. I, uh, I know what they like, what they think, what they think is funny. 
Do you discipline them? Well, we go on more of a reward system. If they, uh, they finish their homework early and get ready for bed, then I read them a story, things like that. So it's more a parent-child relationship? Almost. Uh, you've taken on some of the responsibilities for the girls. Yes. Well, I think if anything happened to their natural parents, I'd, uh, I wouldn't hesitate to take full responsibility for them. Thank you. Your witness. Are you a religious man, Mr. Adams? I would say so, yes. What religion do you belong to? None in particular. Do you attend church services? No. And yet you call yourself religious? Well, I'd say I've, I've kept the heart of religion and discarded the trappings. Uh, well, I suppose in your own form of religion, you uh, have a system of values, a moral code? Yes. And in this system, it's all right for two people to cohabit without the sanction of marriage? If they love each other, yes. Are you aware that fornication, defined as sexual intercourse between unmarried people, is a crime in this commonwealth, punishable by up to three months in prison? No, I... No, I didn't know that. Well... I assume you know it now. Would it be accurate to say that uh, in your system of values, it's all right to break the law if you love somebody? That particular law, yes. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with two adults having a sexual relationship outside marriage. Do you teach Hillary and Melinda Carruthers that it's all right to break the law under certain emotion-dictated circumstances? No, no, I don't make that kind of decision for them. But you demonstrate by your behavior that it's a person's right to choose whether or not to obey the law. Is that right? No. No. I've never discussed this particular issue with them, but if I did, if I did, I would tell them that each person has a right to choose which laws coincide with her own values and, and then act accordingly. That's what civil disobedience is all about. Oh, please confine your responses to direct answers to the questions. Uh, you said you're in the habit of reading the girls' bedtime stories. Is that right? Yes. After they're ready for bed, you said. Yes. In other words, while they're in their nighties. Pajamas, usually, yes. Well, where do you usually read to them? In their room. In their bedroom? Yes. Well, precisely where in their bedroom? Usually, we sit on one of the beds. Do you think, according to your system of values, that it's appropriate for two little girls to sit in bed in their pajamas with a man there was no relation to them? Yes, I think it's the most appropriate way to read a bedtime story. No more questions. You may step down. Any further witnesses other than the children? No, Your Honor. Well, I've given careful consideration as to whether or not the children should testify. And I've determined that it would be in their best interest to have them do so. Have them in the courtroom tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, at which time the court will reconvene. The court will now recess at this time. Can we get to Miss School tomorrow, too? Uh, I don't know. I suppose it depends on what the judge has to say. What am I supposed to say now? Well, you just tell the truth when someone asks you a question. It's going to be great. You okay, Min? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, what is your name? Hillary Carruthers. How old are you? Ten. What grade are you in? Fourth. Do you know what it means to tell the truth? Yes. Well, can you tell us? It means to say just what really happened and not make it up. 
that's very good. Do you know what the consequences of not telling the truth might be? Yes. You feel bad, and you have to tell your mom, and then you get in trouble. Thank you. It's a determination of this court that the witness is competent to testify. You may proceed, Miss Patterson. Thank you, Your Honor. Hi. We've never met before, have we? No, I don't think so. That's right. Don't be nervous. Um, tell me how you like living with Paul Adams. I like it a lot. Tell me about it. We have a lot of fun. Paul likes to play with us and read to us. And he talks to us just like we were real. Like you were real? Yeah, like we were regular people, not like little kids. You go see your dad on Sundays, right? Yes. Would you like to live with your dad all the time? I like Daddy, but I wouldn't want to live with him all the time. And aside from the fornication law, which I referred to earlier, this case is also governed by the 1946 case of Shearer versus Shearer, in which the woman lost custody of her two daughters, aged 6 and 11, because she was living with the man to whom she was not legally married. This case still stands in this commonwealth and is good law on this point. Therefore, we request the court to find in favor of the plaintiff, Mr. Richard Carruthers, and grant him custody. Ms. Patterson? Thank you, Your Honor. The real issue here is the welfare of the children. The burden of proof rests on the plaintiff to demonstrate that there is clear evidence of harm or possible future harm to the children's welfare. I mean, this is he's completely failed to do. It is clear that the children in their present circumstances are happy, well-adjusted, and doing well in their schoolwork. That the presence of Paul Adams is clearly a beneficial one, as witnessed by all parties involved, including the children's teachers. It seems very unjust to uproot these children from their home and completely disrupt their lives simply on the basis of a case that's 36 years old. We therefore ask the court to rule in favor of the dependent and let the children remain in the home under the custody of their mother. Does either counsel have anything further to submit to the court? Nothing further, Your Honor. No, we're happy to submit on the evidence, Your Honor. The court will recess now to make its decision. We will reconvene in one hour. Court is hereby recessed until 4 p.m. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. I just don't want them to be here when he makes his decision. Well, I don't think you should be alone either. I'll be all right. I just want him to be home. Well, I'll take the kids home and I'll wait there until you get back. Paul should be with you. I don't want to go home. Don't argue. Just go with Angie, okay? Yeah, come on, you guys. Your mother's got a lot on her mind. Did I say something wrong to the judge? Oh, you know. Of course not. You were wonderful. Mommy's very proud of you. You too, Hilly. I'm proud of both of you. I'm just a little nervous right now, okay? You go home with Aunt Jane and Uncle Phil, okay? Kiss your mama goodbye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Goodbye. So I just want to say that I think Sheila Patterson did a terrific job. And we've got some champagne in the fridge. When you get home, give me a ring, I'll bring it over. We'll celebrate, okay? Okay, Thanks, Mickey. Okay. Okay. You. Hmm? Okay. Bye, honey. Please rise. The probate and family court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, County of Suffolk, is now in session. The Honorable Preston Winters Judge presiding.
Be seated and come to order. Well, the court is prepared to give its ruling at this time. Now, the court is well aware of the case of Shura versus Shura. And in the court's opinion, that case is controlling in connection with the present facts. Now, simply because the case is 36 years old does not affect its applicability in the matters before this court. As a counsel for the plaintiff, so aptly put it, the mother and her boyfriend are not married and the consequent public scandal of their living under the same roof provides an atmosphere of immorality which is unhealthy for the children. Therefore, it will be the order of the court that the custody of the two minor children, Hillary and Melinda Carruthers, which currently rests with the defendant, Nancy Carruthers, be revoked and awarded to the plaintiff, Richard Carruthers. No! Order. You told me this couldn't happen. I didn't think it could. Then do something! Your Honor, may we approach the bench? Yes, you might. I have a request to make you. I think I could go along with this. What about you, Mr. Crenshaw? Well, I'll have to talk to my client and see what he says, but... Personally, I'd be very amenable to the suggestion. That's good. I know, I know. my time. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you only get one chance. No, yeah. I have my own rules. No, no, no. You guys play by your own rules. Do we have to go live with Daddy? What happened? Well, the judge made a decision that after Hillary and Mindy should live with their father. I don't want to go. They can't make me. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute, girls. Sheila asked the judge if he could wait until tomorrow before making his final order. So we could talk about a few things. What does that mean? Well, he said I can keep the girls if Paul moves out or if we get married. So, Mommy made a decision. I realized I've been thinking about me and not enough about us. And I know you're the most important thing in the world to me. I love you. And I need you. Everyone needs someone. And I don't want to be alone. I have a feeling that if I ask Paul to move out, I might be the most unpopular mommy in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> then we won't have to go live with Daddy? If Paul still wants to marry me. You bet I do, lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Ah. Well, I think we should all go out and celebrate. You two go get your coats. You just want to sleep so you can kiss Mom. Smart girl. <laughs> Mommy, I'm glad I didn't have to go live with Daddy. I wouldn't have gone anyway. This is free country and I'm a free child. Me too. Oh. Come on, ladies. Let's, uh, let's 
sure you want to do this? Are you sure you're not doing it just for the kids? Because I could still move out. And want to have a marriage of convenience. Of course I'm sure. I suppose I should have done this a month ago. We talked about this a month ago. No, I know. I had to fight for what I believed in. Thanks for not giving up to you, you got what I wanted.